Have you ever thought about how what you eat affects the world around you? In this series of short films, we'll look at the impact our food choices can have on the environment and ourselves. And because it's about choices, there's not necessarily right or wrong answers, just different ways of doing things. You should have the chance to make up your own mind about the choices you make. It's a big topic, so I've enlisted the help of three friends to guide us through it. Naomi Robson is 14 and comes from Exmouth. Her most dearly held belief is that shopping should be an Olympic sport. Jamie Osborne is also 14 and can often be found at Exeter's Comedy Club, where he does a regular stand-up show. And Jordan Trick, who at the age of 13 is already a qualified sailing instructor. And while those guys are finding out more about the food we eat, I'll be looking at the impact food production has on our countryside, checking out the local insect life, and even getting stuck into a cow pat or two. But let's start at the beginning. What is sustainability? How do we produce carbon footprints? And what do we mean when we talk about consumption? I think I'll let the guys work it out. Right, the dictionary says it's a progressive wasting of body tissue. I think you'll find that is an illness, Jamie. Look, guys, you're not going to find what you need in a dictionary. Consumption means all sorts of things. Consumption is all about using things up, and it includes everything from the stuff we eat, the stuff we buy, to the stuff we throw away. Every day we consume electricity, water and gas. We are all consumers. If we consume beef, we're eating cows, which in turn have consumed grass. Our food is brought to the shops in lorries that consume fuel. And then our cars consume even more fuel when we go to the shops to buy our food. Practically everything we do makes us consumers of something. And everything we consume, there's a cost. Consumption costs money and time. And sometimes there's an even greater cost to the environment. That's why we have to measure our carbon footprint. Our carbon what? A carbon footprint is the way we measure how much our activities can harm the environment. Every time we burn something, coal in our power stations, wood on a fire, petrol in our cars, it gives off a gas called carbon dioxide or CO2. Carbon dioxide is a major cause of pollution, so a carbon footprint is a measure of exactly how much each thing we do pollutes the world. OK, I understand this is serious stuff, but how does it tie in with food consumption? Easy. Take a look at this. Welcome to the Carbon Cafe. Can I take your order? Yes, I'd like to start with the fresh tomato soup, please. I'm sorry, sir, but it's the wrong time of year to grow tomatoes in the UK. I don't care. I want tomato soup. OK. Welcome to Food Mall Airways, where we're currently cruising towards Saudi Arabia, where they do grow tomatoes this time of year. The distance they'll need to travel to get to us is 3,100 miles. Kilograms of CO2 produced by one pack of tomatoes travelling by air, 1.28. Or for purposes of the demonstration, two balloons. Here's your tomato soup, sir. Ah. And here's your carbon footprint. Right, I have the beef to follow. Right you are, sir. If you look out of your windows to the left of you, you'll see we're approaching Argentina, world famous for its beef. Distance from the UK, 6,900 miles. Kilograms of CO2 produced by one pack of beef, travelling by air, 6.33. All for purposes of this demonstration, eight balloons. Your beef, sir. Ah, oh, beef, lovely. Anything else, sir? Broccoli. I want some broccoli. Not growing in the UK at the moment, sir. I don't care. I want some broccoli. Well, we'd have to go to Spain, sir. Well, adios, then. We will shortly be landing in Spain, where they have plenty of broccoli, which will need to travel 780 miles to get to us. Kilograms of CO2 produced by one pack of broccoli, travelling by air, 0.22. Or for purposes in this demonstration, one balloon. Broccoli, sir. And I want some carrots. Surely you can't tell me that you have to go that far to get those. 
Of course not. We do grow carrots in the UK, but most of our carrots come from China. We are currently over China, 6,000 miles away from the UK. Kilograms of CO2 produced by one bag of carrots travelling by air, 5.5, or for the purposes of this demonstration, six balloons. And to finish, I'll have a fresh pineapple from Ghana. Pineapples come from Ghana. They'll need to travel 3,100 miles to get to the UK. Kilograms of CO2 produced by one pineapple travelling by air, 6.26, or for the purpose of this demonstration, seven balloons. Your pineapple, sir. And here's your carbon footprint. Wow, we can't carry on consuming like that, can we? I mean, that was just a very normal meal. No, we can't. That's because it's not sustainable. Sustainability means we can keep using things because we can keep replacing them without them ever running out. Take beef, for example. Farmers can breed plenty more cows. Each cow can have up to five calves in its lifetime. And the female calves can soon start having their own calves too. Their principal food is grass. That keeps growing, so the cow's food supply won't run out. The crops we grow, fruit and vegetables, can be replaced too, so these are also sustainable. But our fuel supplies are not sustainable. Oil was formed millions of years ago from mineral deposits and we're using it up fast. One day, we'll use it all up, perhaps in our lifetime. Then what will we do? And that's a very difficult question to answer. So that gives you some idea that the choices we make about what we eat and when we choose to eat it affects the world around us. It's not as simple as saying, don't buy food from abroad. Some countries depend upon exporting products to thrive, as do we. But it does get you thinking about where our food comes from and begs the question, could we find a lot of the food we need within a few miles of where we live? We'll find out next time when Jordan, Jamie and Naomi will find out about local food production and I discover the joy of hedges, insects and cowpats. Has anyone got a wet wipe? <laughs>